Hi, welcome to CU Boulder Cooks, brought to you by the Boulder Campus Staff Council. I'm Betty Rasmussen, and I work in the Office of Contracts and Grants, and I'm in a representative for Area 3. So today I'm going to be sharing with you one of our family recipes, and I call it Buffalo Bets Chili Colorado. But the truth is, I was taught how to make this by my uncle Jesus Franco. He grew up in Texas, and it's one of the recipes that he taught me, and it's something we enjoyed. The thing about this chili is we're going to start out with 20 of the dried New Mexican chilies. And we're going to clean those first. So the first thing we're going to do is clean our chilies. And anytime you are working with a chili, whether it is a fresh jalapeno or a dried New Mexican, you're probably going to want to wear some kind of gloves to protect your hands because they can, the, the veins and the, the oils within the chili can be an irritant. So first thing we're going to do, we have our chilies all counted out. And we're gonna rinse them off. And then after they are rinsed, we're going to go ahead and clean them. And we do that by breaking the top off and using our fingers to split them open like that. And we want to get out the seeds and get the veins. And I usually rinse a little bit too. You can keep some of the seeds because that will give you some heat. But now we're going to clean our 20 peppers. Okay, now that we have our chilies all cleaned and ready to go, we're going to put them into a pot of boiling water. Um, usually you wanna have about six quarts of boiling water. And we're gonna just dump the chilies in there and cover them. And we're going to remove them from the heat. And the chilies need to soak an hour so we're going to let them soak. Our chilies have been soaking for an hour so we're ready to continue on with making our sauce. We do need to reserve the water that they have been soaking in so what we're going to do is very carefully pour the liquid into a container. I'm going to have more water than I need here. And we're going to then take those chilies and put them into a blender. Now that the chilies are drained, we're going to transfer them from the pot into a blender or a food processor. Either one will work. And it takes a little bit, but we're going to get them all in there. So now to our chilies, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add two cloves of roughly chopped garlic and oh, get all that good garlic in there and I used pretty large cloves um, and then we're going to add a roughly chopped yellow onion and two cups of our reserved soaking liquid Once that's all in there, we're going to go ahead and puree it. I'm going to start out with just pulsing it a little bit, and then we'll turn it on and let it go until really it's nice and smooth. Chilies are pureed. We're going to go ahead and use that soaking pot again, and we're going to go ahead and force the puree through a sieve. Um, I use a food mill, but you can also use a small screened um, colander with a spoon that will also help. It just smooths out the chili sauce. And so we're going to pour this in here and start working it through the food mill. Now that we have gone ahead and pureed our chilies and run it through the food mill, we have this nice thick sauce. And we just need to put our finishing touches to the chili sauce. So we're going to go ahead and start simmering it. And we're going to add 
a heaping half teaspoon of Mexican style oregano. You can use regular oregano as well, but I, I like the Mexican style. We can get it at our local, local grocery stores. And you're going to put in a teaspoon of cumin and just a little bit of salt. And we're going to mix that in and we're going to bring it to a simmer. We're going to let it simmer for 10 to 15 minutes and our sauce is ready for use. So you can either make your chili right away or you can do what I'm going to do, which is put it in a covered container. I'm going to store it in the fridge overnight and we will finish making our chili tomorrow on game day. See you then. Well, it's a crisp fall day and we're getting ready for some football and some chili Colorado. So we made the sauce last night and today we're actually going to make the chili. I'm going to go ahead and use my instant pot to cook this, but you can also do it in a slow cooker. The first thing that we're going to do is we turned on the instant pot, put it on saute and waited until it said hot. Now we're going to go ahead and add a tablespoon of oil to the pot. We'll let that go for just a moment. And then we're going to take about three pounds of cubed pork shoulder. Now I've also used beef um, and, and a combination of pork and beef. They will all work, it's your choice. Um, you can also do this with chicken. And if you prefer to just do beans, you can also do that. Put that browned. We're going to do a little salt and pepper on the meat. And we're just going to get it browned. It does not need to be cooked through. So, let's get this nice and brown. After your meat is browned completely, you're going to remove it from the pot. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add one chopped onion, two minced cloves of garlic, two chopped jalapenos, and again if you'd like a little extra heat, leave some of those seeds in there. We're going to add a half a teaspoon of oregano and a half a teaspoon of cumin. And we're going to let that cook until the jalapeno is a little soft and the on onions are translucent. After you've sauteed your onions, garlic, and peppers for about three minutes or so, you're going to go ahead and add about a cup of beef broth um, to deglaze the pan. And just scrape up any brown bits from browning the meat. I'm just going to let that's feeling nice and smooth in there now. Then we're going to hit cancel to reset the program on the Instant Pot. At this point, you can either continue with the Instant Pot, or if you prefer to go to the slow cooker, you do the same thing. It's just the, the cooking time is different. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take our meat and we're going to add it back into the pot. Then we're going to take our chili sauce that we made yesterday and add that. We get all that goodness. It's smelling pretty amazing in here. We're going to pour that in to the pot. And again, you can do this with the slow cooker or with the instant pot, they both work. We're going to mix this up really well so that our meat is, everything's well combined and the meat's well coated. Now if you're using a slow cooker, at this point just put the lid on it, cook it for about six to seven hours on low or for four hours on high and it'll be done. If you are using an instant pot, you're going to go ahead put on the lid and seal it. The next thing you're going to do is select the meat stew program and you're going to set it for 25 minutes at high pressure. 
It'll take about 10 to 15 minutes to get up to pressure. It's then going to cook for 25. Once the 25 minutes has um, finished and it's on the hold, keep warm, let the Instant Pot naturally depressurize for 20 minutes. Once that's gone by, after you've let it sit for 20 minutes, go ahead and do a quick release, which we're not going to do right now because we're just starting. Vent it the rest of the way, and then your chili is ready to serve. Final step, we get to eat it. So I put a little rice and some cilantro in a bowl, and now we're going to add our chili Colorado. Oh, look at this. This just smells so good. Get some of that meat and some of the broth. And we're ready to serve. This is just going to be so yummy. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little video on this recipe and I hope you get a chance to try it sometime. It does take time, nothing's that hard, um, and it's well worth the effort. So stay well and go Buffs!